Hey y'all, this is David, the Georgia photographer, and today we're gonna to talk about a very special vintage lens. What I have here in this really, really old case, I don't know if you can see it, it's actually impressed into the top of it. I think this has been exposed to the sun, but yeah, the case is in pretty sad shape, but the lens inside looks brand new. This is a one, this is one, it's not a 100 at all. This is a 250 millimeter F5.6 Minolta mirror lens. Now, you've seen my lens review of my 500 millimeter Nikon. Let me just grab that right quick. 500 millimeter F8 mirror lens. All right, you see how big it is. Okay, Minolta went the other way. Get the case cap off of it. This is a 250 millimeter mirror lens. Look at the difference. It's just tiny in comparison to the Nikkor. 250 millimeters, 500 millimeters. Now, of course, this has twice the reach, but look, this is F5.6, not F8. It's incredible how much smaller this lens is. It's got a little bit of, it's got some, shows some signs of of maybe use over the years. There's a few dings in the lip here, but the glass, the optics are like brand new. It looks beautiful on the inside. Yeah. There's not a scratch on it from what I can tell. Beautiful little lens. Okay. Mirror lenses almost always, I don't honestly know if I've ever seen one that has a variable aperture. They almost always have a fixed aperture. And it's because of the mirror mechanism. You don't have room for an aperture mechanism in here after the light comes in, hits a parabolic mirror on the inside. It's a, it's a donut shaped mirror with a hole in the middle of it. Kicks that image back up to this front mirror on this front element you see here, and then sends that down through that aperture opening in that donut shaped parabolic rear mirror down into the camera. Because of that, there's no, there's no variable aperture. I'm sure some smart engineer somewhere along the way could somehow shoehorn one in there. I happen to come into this lens by accident. This lens is not mine. It belongs to a friend of mine. She happens to have an eBay store and she came into this lens somewhere along the way and picked it up to resell in her store. And they wanted me to basically give the lens a clean bill of health before she put it on eBay for sale. If you look these up on eBay, they're regularly asking in between $1,600 and $1,800 for this little lens because they're exceedingly rare. They're not something you can just pick up anywhere along the way. And because of that, I'm kind of a little bit leery to go out shooting with it. So I'm just gonna take some test shots around the property here. I'm not gonna wander off into Chattanooga with it. Plus it is 250 millimeter. And the only camera I can currently adapt it to is my X-T3. So with the 1.5 crop field of view, it's gonna look like what? About a 375 millimeter lens. So, you know, it's pretty long lens anyway. So I'm just gonna, I think my adapter, that fits my variable zoom. I'm pretty sure it fits this lens. Let's see here. Oh, it doesn't. Oh no, the adapter doesn't work. Ah, I could swore this adapter was gonna fit, but it doesn't. <laughs> I actually have the right mount now. Silly me. The lens in my camera bag is a Pentax, not a Minolta. Now, I have it adapted up to where I can put it on my X-T3. This lens focuses from 2.5 meters, which is apparently about eight feet, to infinity, of course. Actually, it goes past the infinity marker a pretty good ways. There's the infinity marker and it goes two or three degrees, a solid three, maybe four degrees past infinity. So you'll have to focus at infinity. It doesn't have a clean hard stop there. It's got the red alignment dot. This dot is simply here. It's not a infrared dot. It's so that when you put the lens on the camera, they have red dots on the Nolta cameras to line them up so that you can engage it. 
there's not much to say about it. It's a F5.6 fixed aperture. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean the lens optics on both sides to give it a fair shake, and then we're gonna take some photos with it. I'm just using a little alcohol on a microfiber cloth. That's what I clean my eyeglasses with. Just wet it a little bit. And that way I can just clean the optics off without saturating the lens with material. Yeah, there we go. Looks a lot better already. It also looks like it's threaded on the back for screw on filters. It's rear threaded and it's got like a cover lens. This might even be a filter. No, hey, it might be. Let's see here. This looks like a placeholder filter. Let's see. It is. Ha! It is a Minolta normal. That's what it says on it. It says Minolta on one side and normal on the other. Yeah, it's got screw-in filters that go in the back, just like my just like my Nikon has. So yeah, but it doesn't. This particular copy. Let's see if there's some in it. No, there's no filters. Huh? No, I don't think so. No, it's just a piece of foam down in there. It doesn't have any of the filters with it, so it just has the placeholder filter, which it says that they're calling it normal. So yeah, it's still dirty. Let's get it cleaned up here. And the rear optical element looks brand new. This is a, this lens is in beautiful shape. Let's see if I got it clean. Yeah. Pretty good other than a little piece of dust on it. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we go let's put the dust filter back in it and it's got two little teeth on the filter here so that you can drive it with something like a coin or a screwdriver or what have you and it's knurled on the edge so that I can run it down in the lens pretty easily there we go now let's clean the front element get a little more cleaning solution here all right, let's see here. Let's put this on the camera. Put this on the hands. And there it is on the X-T3. Let's see what the photos look like. I gotta give it credit. The little lens performs. It's really sharp. If you do your part, it'll do its job really well. To get good sharp images on my X-T3, since I don't have stabilization anywhere in the system, I basically set the, the camera to five, one five hundredth of a second and ran it in uh, shutter priority. It's technically full manual because you got the, the apertures fixed too. What I done though is I floated my ISO to auto so that whatever the camera needed to do to get a proper exposure, it did it through ISO. It's kind of Phil Thatch's idea. Phil Thatch's channel. If you want to make sure you got a high enough shutter speed to freeze movement, and freeze camera shake, then you know you set it, I, well I normally try to run 1 500. I can normally freeze about any camera shake there. And this being a 250 millimeter lens, I needed a pretty high shutter speed to do that. Now I would brace it on things like I braced it on the porch to get the picture of the orange cat. And then I did shoot the gray cat handheld and some of the 
lights I shot handheld, but most of them were braced on the porch, like the vertical post. I'd stick the camera up against the post so it would be nice and sturdy, and that would minimize camera movement too. So you gotta use best practices with a lens like this. Now the lens itself, the focus ring, is glass smooth. This thing is beautiful, smooth, buttery. Has a wide band of focus, you know, the focus barrel is very broad, has good texture. It's everything about this is really, really nice. It come with a Minolta plastic snap on lens cap that just kind of pops over the lens, kind of like the leather one on my Nikon, but it's made of molded plastic. It's even got little teeth on it so that it'll stick to the lens and won't fall off. That's kind of a nice touch but it doesn't have any of the optional filters that I'm sure it was sold with. Those are missing, so I can't you know, speculate on those and how they would work. There would probably be a red one and maybe a three-stop ND, you know, something like that sometimes. You'll see those. Back from the day, you would see yellow ones and blue ones for color shifting. But yeah, it's a pretty nice little lens. It's an RF Rocker X 250 millimeter F5.6. Made in Japan, it's a Minolta lens. It just, it just works. But I've never seen a mirror lens this small. This just blew my mind how tiny this lens is. It gives you the, the glorious donut bokeh. I even did a bokeh, deliberate bokeh shot so you could see the bokeh. I wanna thank Melissa for letting me use this lens, even though it's quite valuable because of the collectability of it, that she trusted me enough to loan it to me to be able to make this video. So if, you, if you're if you interested in one of these lenses, shoot me an email and I'll get you connected to her and she'll be more than happy to sell you this lens because she's not a photographer, that's not her hobby. So she is, she is looking to sell this lens. I would add it to my collection, but it is, it's quite valuable. They're, they're easily bringing $1,500, $1,600 on eBay. So if you have a hole in your Minolta lens collection and you want to add this lens to that collection, I can get you in touch with her. I appreciate you watching. The subscribe button's right down there. And if you have any questions about this lens that I may be able to answer, shoot me a comment. Maybe shoot me an email if you want to. So until next time, this is David, the Georgia photographer. And what am I gonna tell you to do? Get your camera out and go take a picture with it, all right? We'll see you later, bye-bye.